Hello everyone, we have a trig integral here. This is really just a cosine function, cosine raised to the fifth power. And to evaluate this integral, this is really just a simple use of problem. We actually don't need any uh, special techniques for integrating this function here. So how do we do this problem? Um, first, we will need the trig identity, which is the Pythagorean identity. So if we have sine square x, plus cosine square x, and that's equal to one, okay? And then what happened is that we also would um, would need to um, manipulate this equation so that we can rewrite the cosine um, square x as one minus sine square x, okay? So we isolated the cosine square x right here, and I subtracted the sine square x from both sides of the equation. So I'm getting cosine square x is equal to one minus sine square x. And we are going to need this expression. And then you may say, how do we know that um, when you do more and more of this kind of problem, you will start seeing that we will need either this, an expression for the sine square, or you will need the expression for a cosine square. Okay, so now let's go back to the problem. And so the way that we treat this is that whenever there was an odd power for either the sine or the cosine, then you can actually just factor out one copy of the cosine or the sine, depending on the function. In this case, because that's an odd power, that's a fifth power, so it's odd. And we are going to factor out one copy, one factor of the cosine x. And so to rewrite this integrand, we are going to write it as cosine to the fourth power times cosine x dx. Okay, I'm going to actually just highlight this dx right here. Okay. So, so as you can see that this is equivalent to the original integral. It's really just having cosine to the fourth times cosine to the first, which will give us cosine to the fifth. Okay, so once you factor out one copy of the cosine x right here, then you are going to get a fourth power. You are going to get an even power here. And that's the that's important. We want to get an even power right here. And we can guarantee that we are going to get an even power right here because originally we have an odd power. So if you factor out one copy, then you are going to subtract one from the odd power. That will give you an even power. Okay, so that's what we want. Now, we can actually turn this cosine fourth x as cosine square x. Okay, so let me just highlight this as orange. And then, and then square. So as you can see here, if we have square, square, then you are going to get the fourth power. And then there was still that cosine x power on the outside that we didn't touch. So just leave it for now. Then there's still the dx. Okay, so now what are we gonna do? So you can see that I highlighted this cosine square x on the inside of the parentheses in orange. The reason for why I'm highlighting that in the same colors as this expression is because I'm going to make a substitution here. So instead of leaving the expression as cosine square x, I'm going to replace it by using uh, this expression, one minus sine square x. Yeah, and so I actually can turn it into an expression with that one minus sine square x and then square. And then there was still the cosine x on the outside. The reason for why I want an even power right here is really because I can write that even power as cosine square and then raised to some power, as long as those two numbers will multiply to the even power right here. And because I'm going to keep a square in here so that I can make the substitution. So that's why I, if I have a two here, when I take this two multiply by any whole number on the outside, it's guaranteed to give us an even power right here. So that's why I want this to be even. So that's important. And in order to get this to be even, I actually want the original problem 
either the cosine or the sine. In this case, to it's the cosine, right? We wanted to have an op power here so that when we factor out one copy of that function, then I'm going to be left with an even power. Yeah, so it's important to put it right here. That must be even, right? Okay. Now, let's continue with the problem. So at this step, I'm going to make a u substitution here. So what do we do? We make a u sub. We are going to let u be. Okay, so what do we let u be? We are going to let u be the sine x, not the square. Do not include the square in there. I'm just going to let u be just inside the square here, just the sine function. Okay, so now we need to find the du, right? So the du is going to be what? The du is going to be the derivative of the sine x, which will give us the cosine x. And then there was the dx. Do you see what's going on here? We actually have the cosine x and then the dx. We actually have that same expression right there. So it's really just saying that this expression right here is the same expression as that expression in the integral. And so that means cosine x times dx can be replaced by the du. So let's continue with the problem. So let's continue. Let me just redraw that. So here we are going to get the integral, okay? And then we have one minus. Now, I am making a substitution with the sine x and let sine x be u, right? So we are going to replace the sine x by u. So we have the u here. And then don't forget that there's still a sine, um, there was a still a sine square right here, but then we let u be sine. So we still have the square right there. And then of course there was still a square on the outside of this expression. Okay. And then what about this cosine x dx? We can replace it by du. So I'm going to put the du here. So now let's continue doing the calculation here. Then you may say, how do we integrate this one? This one is just in terms of u, right? So we are integrating respect to u um, because th there was the power on the outside. We need to actually expand this binomial so that we can actually have um, a turn without uh, outside power. So what we are going to do is that we can just expand this one to write one minus u squared times one minus u squared. And and so that's one thing that we're using here, right? So you know that that's, I just need more space to recall stuff. Yeah. So you know that that's that one. And then let me just recall something else right here. Okay. Um, what happens is that if we have a minus b and then quantity square, that actually looks like this form of this expression right here. And that's actually is equal to what? It's equal to a square, okay? And then minus two times a times b and then plus b square. Okay, so what we are gonna do is that we are going to expand it using this formula right here. So in this case, the a is the what? The a is actually the one. So a is equal to one. And then the minus sign comes from the formula, so we don't need to worry about it. And then the b is going to be u squared. Okay, so the b is u squared. So let's expand that. If we are to expand it, then we are going to be getting um, so we got to square the a, right? Which is one. So you square the one. So you're going to get just one. Okay. So, and then we have minus, right? Minus two. And then a times b. A is one, b is u square. So one times u square, we are going to get u square. So we get two u square. And then what is the next one? Plus and b square so we get u square and then square so we are going to get u to the fourth and then there was a du so now we have 
this expression, just three terms added together, right? Now we can integrate just term by term because this is a polynomial. So we can just integrate. And then we are going to get what? If you integrate the one, you are going to just get u. If you integrate the u square with the negative two in front of it, then you are going to get negative two, right? Times u cubed. So you got to add one to the second power, and then you are going to multiply by the reciprocal of this power, which is one over three plus. And then for this one, we are going to get u to the fifth. And then you're adding one to the power and then leave some space in the front so that you can write down the coefficient. So uh, the coefficient will be one over five. And so you finish with the integration and then we have the, uh, the constant of integration, the plus C. But then this is not finished. Basically we are done, but then it's not completely finished because our original function is in terms of X. So we actually need to replace all the u's by the sine x right here so that we will get an expression in terms of x. So let's do that. So finally, we have the answer, which is uh, sine x, right? Sine x minus. Um, this is negative 2 times 1 third, so we get negative 2 over 3. And then the u becomes a sine, right? So you have sine cube of x and then plus one over five the u got replaced so we get sine x and then there was the fifth power right here oh here this x should be in red right so let me just change it and then um the constant integration so plus c and then we're finished with the problem Okay, so in general, when you are integrating um, a sine power or a cosine power, right? If we have an odd power for either the sine or the cosine or both, then you can just reserve one copy, like what we are doing here. And then it turns that power, that odd power into an even power. And then when that happens, then you can actually use the Pythagorean identity to, to do the conversion. And then make a substitution here. After you make the substitution, then you can make the u substitution. So this is basically a u sub integral. It just requires a little bit more work at the beginning so that you can turn it into a u sub problem. Yeah, so that's the strategy. I will talk about the case when both sine power and the cosine power are even, then we cannot do a u sub anymore. We got to try something else to do it. Okay, so that's it for this problem. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel and then give me some support. Leave me a comment, give me a like, and then also please check out my other videos. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time.